Hello guys, how are you all doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review and welcome back to another E3 Q&A. So I do believe that this is the third year in a row where for E3, just leading up to the show, I decided to hold another Q&A, which you guys know I love to do these Q&As. They are always so much fun. It's a great way to interact with you guys. You always ask me a bunch of great questions, and it's fun to do the E3 ones because we get a bunch of E3-specific questions. We're all excited for the show, which should be happening nine days from the day that this Q&A is going to go live. So just, man, it's coming, it's creeping up, it's gonna be amazing. So as per usual, I put a call out on Twitter and on Facebook, and this time on YouTube, on the community page that I've recently been given access to for E3 questions that I wanted you guys to ask me so I could just answer as much of these questions as I could fit into this video as possible. This is by far the most amount of questions I've ever gotten from you guys for an E3 for, for a Q&A. So thank you so much for all the questions. I definitely am not getting to even half of the questions that were asked of me. So uh, if I didn't have a chance to get to your question today, I'm sorry, there was just way too many. Also, a lot of the questions, even some of the best questions, weren't really directly E3 related. I think a lot of you guys just got excited to ask questions. And I got a bunch that were really just about random Nintendo things or Metroid things or just other gaming industry related stuff. Uh, so I did have to pick from the pool of E3 focused questions because that really is the purpose of this. Because we're all so excited for the show to start in literally less than two weeks. So. With that out of the way, I'll say, you know, one last reminder, if you guys want to be a part of these conversations and a part of these Q&A, I always recommend that you follow me on Twitter and or Facebook so that we can interact and do these things in the future. I'm way more active on Twitter. It's the best place to follow me, but still, I do use Facebook a little bit as well for this stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into the questions from you guys. We're going to start on Twitter. First uh, question on Twitter comes from Jorge Chavez Munoz at Tark. Tarkaron? That's always the fun part of this is pronouncing people's names. I'm going to go with Tarkaron. So what is up, Jorge? Thank you so much for being the first question of the day. And Jorge asks me, do you think Nintendo will reveal a new IP this year? Way of Sushido is, but I mean a big scope IP like Splatoon or ARMS. Good question. The new IP question. We're always wondering about that stuff, Jorge. Um, I have to say that it's possible. Nintendo's been doing a great job with new IPs the last couple of years. I mean, you know, people talk about Splatoon and ARMS, which are two very relevant, huge new IPs of the last, you know, four or five years or so for Nintendo. Um, but people also forget Xenoblade. I kind of think Xenoblade counts. I know it's it's a lot of like the Xeno Saga kind of story or not story, I should say, but team from Namco, Namco that moved over to Monolith to start that stuff. But really, that is essentially a Xeno, uh, a Nintendo series. Xenoblade is an is a Nintendo series. So I feel like that also counts here. Uh, and so, you know, those three new IPs the last, you know, five, six, seven years, that's pretty impressive. And I know that there's Wave of the Tsushido, but that's like a weird sort of thing like Jorge's kind of alluding to. Do I think we're going to see one at E3 this year? I think it depends on one thing. It depends on if the rumors about what Retro is working on are true. If the rumors aren't true, then I think there's a good shot that Retro is working on a new IP for Nintendo that very likely would be revealed this year. I'm tending to believe the rumors about what Retro is making, so I'm going to go with the Star Fox thing personally. But anything is possible. And, you know, Nintendo just gave us a new IP last year with ARMS. It would be great to get another brand new IP from them in some way this year as well. But I feel like if it's not Retro, then we're probably not going to see one. But hey, man, you never know. Next question on Twitter comes from Tyler Hoos at the Hoos 85 And Tyler asks me, with the main hardcore RPG Pokemon coming out in 2019, does this increase the chances of Metroid Prime 4 coming out in 2018? Oh boy, I had so many questions about this, and I even was talking about it on Twitter a little bit with the Pokemon thing. I mean, this is a big deal, and everyone knows I've discussed this topic and the release dates for these games to the moon and back over the last year. It's been a huge thing, and I'm very invested in Metroid. There are definitely a lot of Metroid questions I was asked here. As far as this one, does the, the confirmation of 2019 for the new Pokemon game affect Metroid Prime 4's release date, or the chances of it being 2018. This is weird to answer because I actually want to say yes it does, but what I don't know, it, what I don't know is if that means it affects it as a 2018 game or still a 2019 game. I've been saying Metroid Prime 4 is 2019 forever. I'm ultimately still sticking by that, but there is a chance that with Nintendo making 2019 the year for Pokemon, that maybe that means that they knew that they could be comfortably ready for Metroid Prime 4 in 2018. There is a chance that Pokemon's release date does tell us that. 
I'm ultimately not going to say that. And that's because I think that Me Nintendo probably has something else planned for Metroid for this year. And that might come up later in this Q&A, so I won't kind of reveal that. But you guys know what how I feel about that. I still feel like at the end of the day, there's, there's a good chance that Metroid Prime 4 is a 2019 game. We know we're getting a lot of stuff from Nintendo this year. You know, with Smash and probably Fire Emblem, Yoshi, things like that. I feel like if, if we get those games to finish out the year, maybe Bayonetta as well. But then 2019 has the promise of both Pokemon and Metroid. That means 2019 is already shaping up to be incredible as well. Those two games almost alone could probably carry the year, at least from the first party front. So either way, I guess we'll see, man. It's, it's really tough to say. Okay, next question comes from ID8 Gaming at ID8 Gaming. And uh, he asks me, how do you think the rumored leaks will impact the perception of Nintendo's E3 success? And does that perception even matter? Really, really good question. And I would say I almost want to amend this question a little bit because I know you directed the question about the leaks specifically at Nintendo, and that's fair. But honestly, I feel like it applies to just E3 as a whole. I mean, we've had leaks about so many things. Assassin's Creed, uh, Rage 2, you know, Fallout. All the Well, Fallout wasn't really leaked, but still, there's been a lot. Of, the whole Walmart thing is just insane. Uh, so much was thrown onto that thing, and, and a lot of it's been turning out to be true. And there are, you know, leaks relating to Nintendo as well, like Star Fox and whatever. So, I, I think that overall, this year's E3 has just been the leakiest ship we've ever seen going into the show. And so, will that impact anyone's success, Nintendo's or otherwise? I feel like the success... No, because if somebody has a good show and talks about and shows good games, whether they're surprises, whether they were leaked, whether they were already confirmed beforehand, whatever the case may be, if they have a solid show with good content, I think it's not really fair to say that, oh, well, they were leaked beforehand, so suddenly the game isn't cool just because I already knew about it. No, that doesn't make any sense. Like, like a good game, leaked or not, is still a good game. And so I feel like any company's presentation shouldn't be hindered by that. What I do think it could affect, the amount of leaks, is obviously the amount of surprise, the amount of pomp and circumstance, the amount of excitement that we take away. A presentation may be less exciting because games that they show were leaked beforehand, but again, if all those games are kick-ass games, then that's what I think most people will take away from them. We might not be jumping out of our seats because we already knew about XYZ game, but I think we'll be like, well, I mean, that Assassin's Creed looks great, Rage 2 looks great, Star Fox Racing looks great, whatever the case may be. So. Your last part of your of your question here, does that perception even matter? Yeah, kind of. I, f I feel like it still does a little bit because E3 still is important. I know we want to feel like it's getting less and less important, and that's probably true. But as it stands right now in 2018, it is still important, and people care about it. And it, it can help to carry positive buzz out of E3 to help support you for the following year. Not always. 2014 is a great example for Nintendo where they had one of the best showings anyone's ever had. Everyone gave them like company of show and, and, and you know, presentation of show. And even with all that great stuff, it didn't help save the sales for the Wii U and for the games on the Wii U. But then last year is an example of where it did help with Nintendo and made sure that the Switch continued really fantastic success because they had a good show. So either way, I don't know, I guess it's going to be interesting to see how the leak situation affects the show. The next question has another one from Jorge, who was our first question. And normally I wouldn't do this, but I found this one kind of funny, so I wanted to answer this question. He says, uh, where and how do you celebrate watching E3? Does your girlfriend join you? Or does she get mad that you don't pay attention to her when it's E3? <laughs> Which is the whole funny, joking, nagging wife, nagging girlfriend kind of thing. And I wanted to answer this because, no, my girlfriend is not like that at all. She's a total nerdy gamer dork just like I am. She's not as, like, core, hardcore gamer and into the culture and the stuff like I am. I mean, I'm the YouTube guy. That's not really her bag. But she follows it herself. Her and her sister grew up playing games, and they grew up playing the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube. And obviously, she knows a lot of it vicariously through me. We experience a lot of gaming together, and she knows what I'm talking about usually on videos, and she supports it. That's why she's the best girlfriend ever, and I'm a lucky dude because I have a girlfriend who totally supports everything about the hobby, from doing YouTube to just sitting on my butt all, all the time just playing video games. So when it comes to E3, we both get really excited. And so it's something that a lot of times we can do together. We've watched plenty E3 conferences together over the years. Um, as far as where and how I celebrated, I mean, usually just here. Uh, when I lived back in Denver and had a lot of my closer friends, we would usually all get together to watch everything, especially Nintendo stuff. 
But ever since I moved out west, I'm no longer in Denver, so I just kind of do it myself, and that way I have the week off. I take a week off of work, which includes this year as well, so I can watch everything, play video games while everything's just coming at me and seeing all the new information in the live streams and the demos, and then I get to make videos throughout the whole week as well for Rule of Two Reviews. So, yeah, that's that's how I like to do E3. Okay, next Twitter question is, is a really big question, even though it's an obvious question. Uh, it comes from Vigelis Carpetis, who is at Greek Hillian. What's up, buddy? I know you, you comment quite a lot on Facebook and Twitter and stuff, so thank you so much. And what he's asking is, hey, Rob, do you think Nintendo will show Metroid Prime 4 at E3 2018? Maybe they'll show its multiplayer mode. So this question carries all the weight in the world, as far as I'm concerned, because for me, the big question going into the show, bigger than anything else I could possibly know, is will this be the time that they finally show Metroid Prime 4 and there's a hundred reasons to believe they will and there's a hundred reasons to believe they won't That's my personal perspective coming here because I, I could see why it makes sense for them to finally pull the veil back and show it to us It's hopefully gonna be a 2018 game And so they want to detail their 2018 games and this is gonna be one of their biggest games So they want to show it and just start to sell the world on the gameplay the visual style the story the combat the new gameplay mechanics whatever but also I think it's probably a 2019 game and so if it's that far off it's not in the immediate future. It goes against Nintendo's game plan for the show. So they probably want to keep it a secret until later in the year or maybe at the beginning of 2019. All these different things. So what do I think they're going to do? I don't want to spoil a predictions video I'm probably going to make, but I will say I'm kind of I'm kind of in two camps when it comes to Metroid Prime 4. Basically, I still think it's likely a 2019 game. However, I think Nintendo may surprise us and make this their one 2019 tease. I think that they want to do that, and if they do, I think Metroid would be that game. So I'm kind of expecting a little bit of a tease of Metroid still at E3 this year, even if it's not releasing this year. But how much would they show if that's the case? If it's a 2019 game and they're just teasing us, they're not going to give us all the details. They'd probably give us just like a little bit of gameplay. I doubt they would go over something as extensive as the multiplayer mode that he brings up here. So... It depends. If it's a 2018 game and they're giving us all the details, yeah, they're going to talk about a multiplayer mode if there is one and all the other gameplay mechanics. So ultimately, where I rest on this is I do expect to hear or see a tiny something from Metroid this year, but I don't expect the full boat. Next question comes to us from Giovanni387 at Giovanni745. <laughs> and he asks me, uh, what third-party games are you expecting to be revealed for the Switch. Man, this is a huge question and really interesting because you guys know me. I love third-party games um, and I want to see a lot more of that stuff come to the Switch and Nintendo consoles. So there's there's the rumors and leaks about Fortnite and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, I believe those. I've, I've kind of heard about Dragon Ball for like, I don't know, since last year. I kind of knew Fighter Z was probably going to be coming to the Switch. I mean, literally even before the game launched on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it's a great game. I have it on PS4. It's a great game. I'm tending to believe DBZ, although it's not a lock. Fortnite is the thing that is basically a lock. I think we'd all be shocked out of our minds if Fortnite isn't announced and addressed for the Nintendo Switch this year. As far as other things, I'm one of the few weirdos in the camp of Overwatch. I feel like that game still has a chance at showing up on the Switch, and I think it would be great if they announced it this year. So don't be surprised if we see Overwatch eventually, hopefully at E3 this year. Also on that same tip, Diablo 3, I mean, I think we all believe that's probably going to happen as well. Um, I wanted to believe in Call of Duty for so long, I really, in my heart, believed it. But they basically confirmed it's not happening, which is really disappointing and a huge miss by Activision. So that is their bad as far as I'm concerned. They're the ones missing out, not the Switch players, even though I wanted that game on my Switch. Um, GTA 5, I still think it's going to show up at some point. Madden, I think, is probably going to get announced, and EA would be stupid if they don't announce it, because I know FIFA did pretty well, and they're even doing the next FIFA, so why wouldn't they do Madden? Um, the last two big ones for me are a Star Wars game. I think there's a chance that we see a Star Wars game detailed at E3, and I think there's a chance that we see it on the Switch. It's a small chance, but I'm going to kind of hope for that little tiny window that we actually see that happen. And then I would love to see Beyond Good and Evil 2 actually confirmed as a Nintendo Switch title. I don't know that I believe that's possible. A lot of people want to think it's possible or even very likely, and there were things that made it seem like that was Ubisoft's plan, but I'm, I'm, I'm tending to believe that less and less as the days go on. But hey, I might be wrong, so I guess we'll see. Maybe this is the year that they show us 
Beyond Good and Evil 2 or some of these other games are coming to the Switch. Next Twitter question comes from Eric McDermott at SOPWAA. What is up, Eric? Thanks so much for the question, buddy. And he asks, will Nintendo announce their own Battle Royale style game or possibly incorporate it into an existing IP like Splatoon or Smash Brothers? This is a topic everyone's been talking about. Everyone's been asking this question. What about Battle Royale? Nintendo has to jump on the Battle Royale train at some point. And, uh, you know, I agree. I think I agree with that. At some point, Nintendo would would be silly not to incorporate some sort of multiplayer battle royale mode in some game. I mean, they do they do online play so very well with games like Splatoon and Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. Like it's ridiculous. And Arms even. I don't even really like Arms all that much, but it's great online. And Battle Royale seems like something Nintendo could do really well with and put their own cool Nintendo spin on it. What I don't expect is a is like a new game from Nintendo that's Battle Royale. Unless it's like a small downloadable thing, if it's like a Way of Sushido kind of thing, maybe I could see that. But ultimately, I don't think they're going to make like a new IP or a new game that's only Battle Royale. But I do like the idea of them adding it to Splatoon. You bring up Smash Brothers 2, Eric, which is interesting. And like, there's probably a way Nintendo could make a Battle Royale kind of thing work with Smash. But really, I see it in Splatoon. It would be so cool for Splatoon. There's a great way for them to do that, I think. So, I don't know. I guess that's what I hope to see. Next question comes from Brian at BrianJedi82. What is up, Brian? Another super, super active user on Twitter and stuff. So, thanks so much for the question. I was glad I was able to give you a shout out here. And uh, he asks me another Metroid question. He says, what form do you think Metroid Prime 4 will be shown as? Pre-render, in-game, or do you think a demo will be playable as well? So obviously, I already kind of started to address this, and like I said, I got a lot of Metroid questions, you guys. Um, but I still think there's something I can add to this specific answer, because like I said, I have a, a, a part of me that feels like we might see Metroid at the show, as I already stated. And I feel like it wouldn't be pre-render, because that's just not Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't do that. If they're going to show you the game itself, not a logo like they did last year, but if they're going to show you this game we're making there's going to be gameplay. They might include some pre-render stuff in a trailer for something that could be story-heavy like a Metroid, but they ain't going to just show a 60-second CG trailer for Metroid Prime 4 and then call it a day. That's not Nintendo. So if they're going to show us anything of Metroid this year, it's going to be in-game, and that is super, super exciting. Um, you ask about if there would be a playable demo. I would say if this is the year that it's launching and they're giving us a huge blowout at E3, yeah, I think a demo is very, very possible. I doubt it would be like a, you know, download it when E3 is over kind of thing. I think it would be closer to the launch of the game. But either way, I, I could see them doing a demo for Metroid Prime 4. They've done it for Splatoon. They did it for ARMS. They're doing it right now for Mario Tennis. I mean, it's a really smart thing Nintendo's doing. Uh, Project Octopath, which is third party, of course. So yeah, I would think they'd give us a playable demo for Metroid. Next question on Twitter comes from my boy, Patrick, at Nintentalk, an awesome YouTube channel. He's been doing really well in his first year and a half or so. I actually uh, joined the Planet Nintendo podcast that he hosts a couple of weeks ago, which was so much fun. Mostly talked about Metroid and Bayonetta, so you guys should check that out. That was like probably three or four weeks ago. Anyway, uh, Patrick asked me this question. How can Nintendo mess up E3? It is possible, right? Which is obviously kind of a joke there. Um, but you know what? Yeah, it is possible. It's totally possible. We should never rule that out. Any company can screw up. Even Nintendo, who we all love, they are far from perfect. They have screwed up E3 before. We've all seen that happen, man. Let's be real. So, how could Nintendo mess up E3? There's a couple of ways. Even though I will give this preface, I don't expect this, you guys. This isn't my prediction, and I know Patrick well enough to know this isn't his prediction either, but it's a fair and really good question. So, how could they mess it up? Well, one is... They're focusing on Smash Brothers this year. We know it's their big focus game. Uh, let's say that Smash just doesn't look good. Let's pretend that that's a possibility. None of us believe that. But let's be realistic here. Let's be adults. What if that happens? If Smash was 70% of what they show this year, and it just doesn't look good, that's going to, like, catastrophically destroy their E3 presence and their 2018 presence this year at E3. So... That's one option. We don't believe it, but it could happen. The other thing is if, and I've said this, I don't expect a lot of huge other surprises and big things outside of Smash. They're going to talk about, they're going to talk about Yoshi and that'll be really great. And they're obviously going to probably talk about Fire Emblem and I'm sure they'll knock those out of the park. But what if they have nothing else exciting to show and the couple of things they reveal 
are just just kind of dumb, weird, small little puzzle games that just aren't exciting and aren't going to get Nintendo fans and, and even lapsed Nintendo fans excited to get ex to get into Nintendo again, that would be disappointing and mess up their show. And then the last thing is, is if they do what they've done in the past, if they give us a couple of announcements of games and franchises that are more like Metroid Prime Federation Force or... Paper Mario Color Splash, stuff like that, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. If they give us announcements like those, but not what they did last year with a brand new Pokemon and a Metroid Prime 4 and a Samus Returns and a new Yoshi and all that stuff that's exciting, they're going to mess up E3. Nintendo cannot afford to ever do that again. No more Federation Force or Color Splash games. No more Amiibo Festivals. They can't do those kinds of things. And I don't expect that, luckily. And I, I should say, I actually like Federation Force. It's a good game. But still, the problem was real. And I felt it that year when it was announced. I was like, what is this garbage, Nintendo? You're crazy. All right, coming up to the next one. So many questions, you guys. I'm trying to go through these as fast as I can. So hopefully this is still proving entertaining for you guys. Or maybe almost halfway through. I don't know. Either way, next Twitter question comes from Sonic Man the Best at SonicMan4321. And he asks me, do you expect Pokemon or Last of Us Part 2 to release within the year? Good question. Um, Pokemon was confirmed for the back half of 2019. So at this point, even if it was July 1st, which is like probably like the first, you know, that's the first day of the seventh month. That's, that's more than a year from now. So that for sure we're getting in more than a year. Last of Us is interesting because I, I thought about this recently. I think it was even after I, after I read this question. I don't know that I expect the game in 2019. I think it's probably a 2020 game, even though they are going to detail it this year, so who knows. But here's the thing. The Last of Us released in June, and it released like the week of E3. So part of me wonders if The Last of Us Part Two is going to be a 2019 game. I almost do believe it could be another June release. Maybe that's something that Naughty Dog likes to do with The Last of Us. And so if that happened, yeah, I could actually see The Last of Us Part Two coming almost exactly one year later from E3. Next question comes from John AF at Off Brand John. And John asks me, given Microsoft's past acknowledgement of needing new IP, is it possible that a Western RPG that's a new IP and not Fable 4 could debut? Or Shadows Die Twice being a timed exclusive secured by Microsoft with From Software? Really good questions, John. Thanks so much for those, buddy. Um, so the first question, we do know that they need new IP and that Microsoft recognizes that. And I expect to see that in some fashion this year. Um, we know Fable 4 has been rumored and I expect to see that. Could they do another Western RP RPG that's a new IP? Yeah, I think they could do that. I mean, people forget that the first Mass Effect was a new IP, a Western a Western RPG and was exclusive to Microsoft at the time, you know? Yes, it was a Bioware game and it took a while for that license to change, but... Until Mass Effect 2 came out, Mass Effect was an exclusive IP to Microsoft. So, yeah, they could do something like that again, and I would love to see that, actually. Shadows Die Twice? Interesting question. And I think it's tricky because I think we all know that there's a possible there's a possibility that that game is a rope-a-dope, and it turns out to be like Bloodborne 2. I would love to see that happen. Um, if that happened, then the answer is no, it's not going to be a, you know, temporary exclusive to Microsoft because Bloodborne is a Sony IP. That is a Sony owned IP. It was just developed by From Software. But if Shadows Die Twice is something else, uh, it's another, who knows what, it, there's rumors it's a Tenchu, it's a Dark Souls, it's a new IP, whatever it is, something that could be multi-platform. I mean, it would be nice to see Microsoft secure that as a timed, uh, a timed exclusive. They did, they've done that a couple times before, you know, they did that with uh, Tomb Raider. That backfired, but they did do that. So, that's a tough call. It depends on if it's Bloodborne or not, and I think that there's a slight chance that they might do that. The last Twitter question for the day comes from Fluffy the Ostrich, at Fluffy the Ostrich. <laughs> Pretty funny name. And uh, he or she asks me, what is a 6th gen remaster you would like to see show up at E3 this year? Man, there are so many, because the 6th gen is my second favorite generation of all time. Absolutely. So I have I have a lot of answers I could give here. I'm actually just going to list really quickly a couple of them. And it's tricky because two of them that I would dream of have already happened. Resident Evil 4 has been remastered many times, one of my favorite games. And The Wind Waker got a remaster on the Wii U a couple of years ago. And those are like probably my two favorite 6th gen games of all time. They're probably like top five games of all time for me. Um, so those ones have already happened, but there's a couple of other ones. Knights of the Old Republic, for sure. I know that's been re-released in a lot of ways, but like 
a really well done remaster like the way they did Shadow of the Colossus, for example. If they did that to Knights of the Old Republic, look out. I'm taking six months off from work to play that game if that happened. Um, one of them is, uh, you know, that Metroid Prime trilogy. I would love to see that happen, and that includes two 6th gen games, Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2. I think that's going to happen. You guys have heard me say that, so that's one I'm going to throw out there. Uh, Eternal Darkness for the GameCube. Would love to see that remastered. SSX3, one of my all-time favorite games. Such a masterpiece. Please remaster that game. And also the Rogue Squadron games, which were exclusive to the GameCube. Rogue Squadrons 2 and 3, which were Rogue Leader and Rebel Strike. I would love those remastered. And there was talks from Factor 5 a couple of, like, a year ago about doing that. But it seems like that game is, that series is, like, locked behind, like, crazy rights issues. So we probably would never see it, but I would sure love to have it. Okay, let's move over to a couple of Facebook questions. First question on Facebook comes from Gregory Bush, who says, With Nintendo saying they'll continue supporting the 3DS... Do you think Nintendo will introduce any new IP for the system at E3? Good question, Gregory. Thanks for that question. Um, I would say that no, I don't expect it, but it is possible because they have been good about doing that the last couple of years. I mean, Ever Oasis was just like a year or two ago. People forget about that. And it was supposed to be a pretty decent game. Um, before that was uh, Codename Steam, which also I heard was a good game and I didn't play. So... Anything is possible. I wouldn't give up all hope on the 3DS. I know that Nintendo is still planning on supporting it for a while, no matter what they say. They just announced a new Zelda-themed 2DS. It's insane. So, anything's possible. I wouldn't put money on it, but it might happen. Next question on Facebook comes from Ansley Freeman. What is up, buddy? Thanks so much for asking another question. Very, very vocal on the Facebook page. So, thank you so much. And he asks me, Good morning, Rob. I was wondering if there was a classic Nintendo franchise you would like to see be remade in the modern era. And what is the likelihood it would appear at E3 this year? So this is a great question because I'm going to cheat with this one a little bit. Because my true answer to this would probably have been Star Fox. And we all know that there's a huge rumor about Star Fox getting some sort of more modern remake, a little bit of a genre change into something that sounds a little bit strange and off-putting, but potentially very amazing. I'm optimistic about these rumors. And so I would like Star Fox... And if, if there's anything to these rumors, I think that there's a great shot that it does show up at E3. So I can kind of cheat by saying Star Fox is my answer. And the, my answer to your question about it appearing at E3 is, yeah, I think that there's a really good chance that this new Star Fox game made by Retro, if it's real, will show up at E3. Next Facebook question comes from Matthew John Daniel Welch. What is up, Matthew? Thank you so much for another question. Uh, he asks me, hey, Rob, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. Do you think that we will see anything from, like, Banjo, Conker, Jack and Daxter, or any other classic platformer mascot at E3 with Crash and Spyro attracting so much attention? Awesome, awesome question. You always ask really good questions, buddy, so thank you so much for that. And you know what? Yeah, I actually think that there's something to that. I do expect to hear from Banjo and Banjo-Kazooie in some way, shape, or form this year at Microsoft Show. We know that they understand the precarious situation they're in. As referenced in an earlier question, they know they need new IP. Well, this wouldn't be a new IP, but we know they need exclusives. And I just think that this is a franchise and a character that makes a lot of sense to bring back. A lot of talk about Rare lately. They're going to have a two-hour show. There's so much time for them to put so many games and announcements in there. And that was my theory on a video I made a couple of weeks ago that that's probably why they're stepping away from the E3 conference space. And they're going to have a two-hour show because they probably are going to surprise us and finally show, okay, we had two really slow years, sorry about that, here's a bunch of crap. And it could be really, really great like Nintendo in E3 2014. And so I feel like Banjo is that secret sauce that, Nint that uh, Microsoft is going to unveil on us. Um, as far as anything else, I feel like Sly Cooper is, is one that's rife for the picking. Although, did they do a remake of Sly Cooper on the PS4? Or maybe that was something on the PS3. Or maybe that was just a new entry on the PS3. I can't remember now, but for some reason, Sly Cooper feels like it really, really makes sense. You know, they already did, um, Ratchet and Clank. I feel like they would be smart to also add Sly Cooper into the mix. So, yeah, those are my guesses. Okay, one more question from the Facebook page comes from Baron Kewen. Hopefully I'm saying your name right, Baron. Thank you so much for the question. And he asks, Greetings, Rob. Keep on rocking your channel. Thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate it. What third-party title announcements do you want to see for the Switch at this year's E3? Any chance of a new exclusive third-party title, one which isn't announced yet? So, the first part of your question I essentially already answered from somebody else's question. 
Um, but the second one, I like the idea of. Is there a chance of a new exclusive third-party title? And my answer is unequivocally yes. I absolutely think something like that is going to happen. We've already seen a couple of examples of that. Bayonetta 3 and the new No More Heroes game are, th are third-party, very high-profile, exclusive Nintendo and Switch games. And Nintendo's been really, really good about that. They had uh, Mario and Rabbids last year. Nintendo is going to have more of that stuff as they, as they continue to go. It's the greatest thing about Nintendo. They are much better at, secu at securing third-party exclusives than the other two guys. Even though Sony and Microsoft kill it with multi-platforms, Nintendo's always been really good about the sporadic, exclusive game made by a third-party publisher or developer. And I love that about them. A lot of times, they're great. Look at the Wonderful 101, for example, or even the first two No More Heroes games. I know the first one eventually got a remaster on PS3, but still... Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, even though we have two of them already announced, and I feel we're probably going to hear from Bayonetta and No More Heroes at E3 this year, I wouldn't be surprised if they announced a brand new one. I mean, who the developer would be, I have no idea. Probably, I mean, well, I was going to say Square, but Square is Project Octopath, so there's another one. I mean, Nintendo's so good about this stuff. Who knows? I, I'm not ready, I'm not yet ready to predict the developers, but there's going to be someone else. I would be shocked if we don't get another new third-party developer exclusive Switch game, and it might not even be at Nintendo Show. It could be at a Ubisoft or an EA press conference. Okay, two more questions to go, and these ones come from YouTube. Like I said, I was recently given access to the community page so I can make posts and stuff and ask you guys questions and comment and, and, and talk with you guys on YouTube, and that's where these come from. So, this first one from YouTube is a really, really good question. Uh, this comes from Nova, Scor Nova Scorvis. Nova Scorvis. I hope I said that right, and I probably didn't. And uh, Nova Scorvis says, What do you think are the chances of us seeing Metroid Dread at this year's E3? Also, I'm loving your videos. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I get a lot of compliments from you guys. Thank you so much. That really, that really pads my ego. That doesn't need to be padded anymore. But uh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, so to answer the question, Metroid Dread. What a weird, crazy conundrum that title is in, man. That is like one of the biggest vaporware crazy stories of the recent last decade when it comes to video games. And you know what? Here's why I wanted to an answer this one. Because I have a surprising answer to I have a very specific answer to the Metroid Dread question. And I probably should make my own video on this, but instead I'm going to talk about it here. Metroid Dread. My big, bold prediction that I am putting the Rob stamp of approval on right here and now before the end of time, we're going to see Metroid Dread show up in some fashion. Now, I don't know what that means. That could be an enemy in a game. That could be a book. It could be a comic. It could be a video game. It could be the next... It could be Metroid 5, the next 2D platformer that's a sequel to Metroid Fusion. It could be the game that comes after Metroid Prime 4. It could be the subtitle to Metroid Prime 4. I don't even know, man. I don't even know... But I just feel like Metroid Dread, the, those two words are destined to get some sort of release in an official capacity from Nintendo as an officially made thing that they create. And like I said, I just gave you four or five examples of how that could happen. And if any one of those things happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider my prediction correct. So Metroid Dread is not dead. It will show up in some fashion. Let's make it more specific about this year's E3. Well, the only way that could make sense would be if my Metroid Prime 4 thing was true. And maybe the title for Metroid Prime 4 is Metroid Prime 4 Metroid Dread or something like that. Or maybe it's just they just change it from Metroid Prime 4 to Metroid Dread, colon Metroid Prime. We you know there's a hundred ways people put together titles anymore. So it would have to be Metroid Prime 4 turning into Metroid Dread. I don't expect that. So my answer to the specific question is no, I don't expect Metroid Dread at E3 this year. I will leave a 10% chance so that if it happens, I can say like, oh, I kind of had that right as a random guess. <laughs> but I, I truly, I mean, my ultimate prediction is that that won't happen. Um, but I just, I wanted to say this, man. We're gonna, we're gonna see Metroid Dread release in some fashion. I know it would be dumb if it comes out as like a book or a comic book or a manga series, but I don't know. I just feel like that name, that idea will not go away. And I will say that, I'm gonna add one thing here. My feeling for Metroid Dread, my, my, my dream wish for a Metroid Dread would be for it to be a new Metroid title. First person, third person, 2D, I don't even know. I would probably prefer this one to be third person. And I feel like, and I've said this for so long, Metroid could work as almost a pseudo horror game 
where Nintendo tried to make it kind of a scary experience, sort of like Dead Space mixed with Metroid Prime. And Metroid Dread is a great name for that kind of experience. And I feel like Metroid is, has, in a very kind of cartoony way, treaded into the scary sort of element a little bit. They've kind of played with that here and there. So I feel like they could just make it a, a deeper step or commitment into a scary experience and call that sucker Metroid Dread, man. Do it, Nintendo. We want to see it happen. And the final question of today, also coming from YouTube, comes from Crit Astra. And two questions from Crit. The second one I've already announced like two, I've already answered two times. So I'm just going to focus on the first question. So uh, the questions are, what are your predictions for Fire Emblem Switch? Parentheses, Fire Emblem 16. Gosh, 16? Really? Anyway, and then the next question is what third-party games or ports do you want to see announced for the Nintendo Switch at E3, which, like I said, I've already addressed that a couple of times already. So I really just want to talk about Fire Emblem one last time here because Fire Emblem is a big deal going into E3 because, you know, I've said it, I've made videos and talked about it. Smash is the focus, we know that. Fire Emblem is this big already confirmed X Factor title where they they basically said last year, hey, we're making a Fire Emblem game. It's going to come out next year. The end. We don't know anything else about it. And this is a year where, like I've said, I don't expect a lot of big surprises for Nintendo. I hope to be wrong, but I'm not expecting a lot of big surprises. So what would be great is if they spent most of their time on Smash, but also a huge portion of the rest of their time finally showing us Fire Emblem, giving us the full title, showing us how it's going to be new and different or whatever, what it looks like, and giving us a date, reconfirming it as a 2018 title, because there's a small worry it's going to get delayed, but I don't ultimately feel that. So my predictions for that is that I think Nintendo is going to, is going to give us some of the goods on Fire Emblem at E3, and you know, I think it's really just going to be a, just a console version of what the last couple of Fire Emblem games have been. I think there's going to be a heavy focus on relationships and characters and story. Um, and I think it's going to be more of the same great combat. I could see them, you know, wanting to change up the formula a little bit because in the Switch era, Nintendo has been trying to do that. They did it with Mario. They did it with Zelda. I expect it sort of with Metroid. Um, we kind of expect that with Pokemon, for example. There's been rumors about that with Pokemon. I would think they're going to do something on Fire Emblem Switch to switch it up. And it could be something where, honestly, they might try to give us gameplay sections outside of battle. Because, you know, that's not typically the Fire Emblem way. Usually, you're doing a lot of the conversation. You're, like, building up, like, in Fates. You're building up your castle and you're, and you're doing your gardening and talking to the whatever. I don't even remember what it's called anymore. You're doing your in-between battle stuff. And then you go out into the world to find battles for grinding or to go into your next story chapter battle. And the story just plays out with cutscenes of the characters until you guys start fighting. And that's great. But maybe they finally decide to give us some sort of gameplay mechanic where you're controlling characters in a world outside of battle and outside of like your town or your hub where you're doing all your stuff. Um, I could see that being something where at first a lot of diehard Fire Emblem fans might be like, no, this is terrible. It's going to ruin the game. That's not what Fire Emblem is supposed to be. And like, I get it. I don't necessarily need them to do that. To do that. I'm fine with it the way it is. But I feel like there could be a way where Nintendo could make that work. And if it doesn't compromise the content of the game and what the battle system is like and the and the character interaction is it could be great maybe they had add like some real-time combat stuff alongside of the strategy combat stuff who knows it's really tough to say as far as surprises but that's probably the number one thing that comes to my head for how nintendo could change up fire emblem for the switch but ultimately i expect it to be just a kick-ass next generation console fire emblem game following on the heels of Awakening and Fates' success. And I love Fates. I know some people don't, but I thought Fates was fantastic. The, the one that I played. So yeah, I just expect more of that on the Switch. And I think it's probably going to be great, you know? And I hope that whatever they show us doesn't really disappoint people. I don't want Fire Emblem Switch to be what I referenced earlier and be the Fire Emblem version of Federation Force or Amiibo Festival. We can't have that. They cannot afford to do that to Fire Emblem. And I don't think they will. Nintendo knows what they're doing. Fire Emblem Switch is going to be amazing. And with that being said, I think we're good. Those are all the questions that I chose today. Seriously, you guys, I cannot tell you. I probably had, I don't know, another 30 questions uh, to, to answer. It was insane. So many questions. So many good ones. Like I said, many of them not E3 related. And to be fair, all, almost all the questions I got today were Nintendo related. It almost should have been Nintendo E3 Q&A. But I wanted to talk about any of the companies and I had a couple of reasons to talk about Microsoft or UA uh, Ubisoft EA whatever and that was fun because I'm really excited to see what everyone's gonna bring but 
yeah, man, that's it. E3 is like just barely over a week away. As of the day, this video is going to go live. So one last time, thank you guys so much for your questions. I love interacting with you guys. I love giving you shout outs. You guys really seem to enjoy this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, like I said, to be a part of the conversation and Q&As in the future, follow me on Twitter. Don't be crazy. Follow me on Twitter. I am super active and always tweeting and talking and, and interacting and doing the whole thing on Twitter. And then, of course, like I said, Facebook as well. So please discuss any and all questions that I talked about and answered today. What do you think about my answers? What are your own answers, your theories and predictions for Nintendo and everyone else in Metroid? So much Metroid. There were so many Metroid questions I wanted to answer that I had to like, I had to cut myself off of questions. I was like, no, I have to draw the line at this many questions. This is it. Because I just could have done a whole Metroid Q&A. Maybe I should actually do that one day, a Metroid Q&A. So... Either way, that's it. Everyone, please be excited for E3. It's coming up soon. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in for your and for your support of Rule of Two Review. It is greatly appreciated. That is it for me today. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you guys next time on another E3 video.